So here's a BC only problem from 2018. It's a calculator question and it's, it's kind of a tough one. There's some tough little aspects to this one that we'll try to discuss as we make our way through. So it's talking about researchers on a boat investigating plankton cells at sea. Uh, and at a depth of H meters, the density of the plankton cells, and it's measured in millions of cells per cubic meter, is modeled by this crazy looking function here. So P is some function of H. H, this holds from the H value of zero to the H value of 30. And it's modeled by something different, not specified, right? F of H, once H exceeds 30. Uh, and then, like I just mentioned, we don't explicitly have access to that function f. So in part a here, we're asked to find p prime of 25, use correct units, and interpret the meaning of that within the context. So this is a situation where if, if you're allowed to use a calculator, it makes sense to use your calculator's capability of approximating the value of a derivative numerically for you. So you see my calculator input right here. Uh, you're going to suck up quite a bit of time and, and open up the, the opportunity to make some mistakes if you try to do a product rule and a chain rule in order to take this derivative. You're not wrong if you go that route and then evaluate it at 25, but you're going to definitely be taking quite a bit more time than, than you should. And in a time situation, you should definitely use the calculator to its full advantage. Um, and so I got this value back. And then it was a matter of trying to analyze units and try to interpret what that means. And so when I analyze units of a derivative, what I always try to do is I always try to think about how this function would look if I were to graph it. So I would have P of H plotted on the y-axis, and I would have H plotted on the independent variable axis, the x-axis. And I think about the units on the y-axis. So the units on the y-axis would be millions of cells per cubic meter. So we've got crazy units here, units of density. Uh, and then the units on the x-axis, the units of H would be meters, um, right? H is measured in meters, yeah. So the units of this derivative would be the units of y divided by the units of x, since derivatives are just special slope calculations. So the units, I have them at the tail end of my explanation here, millions of cells per cubic meter, those are the units of y, per meter, units of x. Uh, and then what's the actual interpretation? Well, at the value that we put into the derivative, which is 25, and, and that's an h value, and that's measured in meters, so at a depth of 25 meters, the density of the plankton cells is decreasing by about this many million cells per cubic meter per meter. Uh, the one thing that you have to watch out for in, a, in an explanation or interpretation like this, this value is negative. I use this word decreasing in my explanation, which implies that the amount is going down at this depth. If I use this word and then I include a negative sign right here, I've actually double negatived myself there and, and I'm actually implying that something's increasing rather than decreasing. Just watch out for that. Include the negative here and don't say anything. Just say something about it being a rate. Uh, I went the route of using the word decreasing, so that's why I avoided using the negative on that number. Part B is kind of interesting. Talks about a vertical column of the water in the sea horizontal cross sections, constant area, three square meters. To the nearest million, how many plankton cells are in this column of water between H equals zero and H equals 30? So here's what I thought. I thought, well, I'm going to approximate the amount of plankton cells in a cross section of the column. So I'm going to have to have the volume of that cross section, and I'm going to have to multiply that by the density in order to figure out how many plankton cells are present within that cross section of the column of water. So the volume of a cross-section is going to be the area of the face of a cross-section. They tell us that is a constant 3 square meters. So I have the area of the face of a cross-section times the tiny height of that cross-section. So some tiny, tiny change in the depth of the water. Uh, the density is represented by the function P of H. So if I have this representing the number of plankton cells in one cross section of the column and I want to find the total number of plankton cells in the entire column, I'm going to have to add together a bunch of these approximations. And so what 
a definite integral does by definition is it adds together infinitely many things for us. So if I toss this expression here into an integral, I'm going to have the, oops, I should have a dh here, not a delta h. I meant to change that. Let me try to fix that on the fly here. I'm doing this with a mouse, so it's probably going to look kind of ugly. So the delta h should change to a dh. And if I do this integral, uh, I'm going to have added together all the cross, all the plankton cells across all the cross sections that range from this h value up to this h value. And the calculator's in play, so you see my calculator input here to evaluate the definite integral, round that to three digits beyond the decimal, and make sure that I, I specify units that that's really millions of plankton cells. So in part C, you know, I read that opening sentence and I thought, well, that's, that's kind of goofy. I'm going to kind of read a little further and, and see if I can do something before I try to digest what that opening sentence is telling me. Uh, so if you read this next sentence, it tells us that the column of that water that we were talking about in part B is actually K meters deep and K is going to exceed 30. So this density function only holds when the depth of the water is between 0 and 30. Uh, we need to deal with a new density function, not explicitly given, for values of h above 30. And so what we're asked to do is we're asked to write an expression involving one or more integrals that gives the number of plankton cells in millions in the entire column. So here's what I thought to do. I thought, well, we've already done this for 0 to 30. So back in part B, you know, if I want the number of millions of plankton cells on the interval 0 to 30, I have to do that exact same definite integral. Uh, now I have to consider the depth of the water being a little bit beyond 30 meters, and I'm going to have to have my new density function taking over. So I have the exact same calculation within the integral, but now I have the density function inside the integral that applies for depths beyond 30. And that's going to be the number of millions of plankton cells from a depth of 30 to a depth of k. And they don't specify what k is. But this is the expression involving one or more integrals that gives us the number of millions of plankton cells in the entire column. Now let's go back and try to figure out what that opening sentence is going to be good for. So it tells us that 0 is less than or equal to f of h. And that's our new density function that holds for depths of water above 30. Uh, and that new density function is less than or equal to some other function, u of h. And that's going to hold for all h's greater than or equal to 30. They tell us that the definite integral of u of h from 30 onward to infinity is equal to 105. And so this improper integral has a, f a fixed value of 105, a finite value of 105. Okay. So think about that last sentence. Explain why the number of plankton cells in the column is less than or equal to 2,000 million. So this is the total number of plankton cells in the column of water. We know what the first component of that expression has a value of. Back in part B, we determined that that was about 1676 million cells of plankton. Now they're telling us that the water actually goes a little bit beyond 30 meters in depth. They've also told us that f of h is less than or equal to u of h. So if I factor the 3 out of this integral right here, right, I can always factor constants out in front of definite integrals. They're linear operators. We're allowed to do that. Uh, and I write a similar integral on the other side of this inequality symbol, right? f of h is less than or equal to u of h, so I know that the definite integral of f of h from 30 onward to infinity is going to be less than or equal to the definite integral of u of h from 30 onward to infinity, and I've just factored the 3 out in front of those integrals or multiplied both sides of that inequality by 3, however you want to think of it. I can actually figure out what the value of this expression is right here. I know that the definite integral from 30 to infinity of u of h with respect to h is 105. So if I multiply that by 3, what I end up with is I end up with 315. Since this quantity has to be above this expression back here, and I guess I'm, I'm kind of overlooking something here that I should mention, uh, k is not going to get any larger than infinity. Right, So this is the absolute biggest value. Uh, this expression right here is the absolute biggest value that this expression here can ever take on. If I know that the absolute largest value that this can ever be 
is going to be less than or equal to 315. If I add that 315 onto the 1676 that I had for the first term within that expression, that gets me to 19. 1991 million cells of plankton and so what we've effectively done here is we've proven that the number of million cells of plankton cell the number of million cells of plankton in the entire column of water is less than or equal to 2000 million in fact we've proven that it's less than or equal to 1991 million cells last part of this is pretty quick it's it's kind of procedural uh, they talk about a boat the boat that is investigating the situation moving on the surface of the sea. Uh, the position of the boat is specified by a set of parametric equations, right? So x is determined by some function of t, y is determined by some function of t. They don't give us x of t or y of t, but us something a little bit more useful. They've given us the rate of change of x, uh, and they've given us the rate of change of y with respect to t. Uh, time is being measured in hours, x of t and y of t are measured in meters. Find the total distance traveled by the boat over the time interval 0 to 1 hour. So there's a, an expression that I'm sure you've dealt with if you've studied parametric equations a little bit. The way that you're going to determine the total distance traveled or the total length of the curve from time 0 to time 1 in this case is going to be by computing the value of this expression. Calculator's in play. She can compute that with the calculator. You see my input for my TI-83, copy and paste it right here. There's the value rounded to the third digit beyond the decimal. It doesn't really ask for units, I don't think. Yeah, it, it doesn't mention anything about units here. I attached units to my answer. Uh, be really careful. If, if you have a TI-83, if you have something that's kind of clunky to, to do the input with, when you're evaluating a definite integral, uh, just be careful with it. A lot of grouping symbols, you see that in my input here. Uh, but as long as you're careful, you get this value back in return. And that is it for this question.